So, uh, praise God, everybody. Amen. God is good. That was good worship. I enjoyed that. Glory to God. Okay, we're going to get into our lesson. Today's lesson, we're going to continue our series on diligence slash laziness. So today's lesson is on diligent boundaries. Diligent boundaries. Part of your diligence is having healthy boundaries. Amen. Healthy boundaries over committing is unhealthy. Saying yes when you're supposed to say no. <laughs> over committing or taking too many responsibilities. Uh, because because you have a it's hard for you to say no or you don't have the diligence to say no amen therefore it takes up your your time and space and so forth okay let's pray Lord thank you thank you Lord for another day thank you Lord for this lesson We ask you to speak to us, open our eyes, that we may see our ears to hear and our heart to receive. Let the word that go forth may land on good ground and bring forth fruit to perfection, so that we may be perfect in you, lacking nothing for our destiny. We bind the thief that comes to steal the word in the name of Jesus. Let us guard the word of God in our hearts with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Amen. Okay, so healthy boundaries is part of you being diligent. Now, remember, the, uh, the lazy way or the lazy route is to not put any effort or when things get hard to just give in. But it's important to learn how to say no. It's important to learn how to say no when you're not able to do something. Uh, God has got an order and one of the things he wants us to order is our mouth order what we say now Jesus said in Matthew 5 Jesus said in Matthew 5 let's go there real quick let your yes be yes and your no be no hallelujah thank you Lord Matthew chapter 5. Diligence is good. Okay, Jesus said in Matthew 5, verse 33, Again, ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths, but I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your yes let your communication be, yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. So if you can do it, you say yes. If you can't do it, say no. And say it with a smile. <laughs> Amen. It's good to be assertive. 
being assertive is a uh, part of being diligent. You know, there's a nice way of letting people uh, saying no. There's a nice way of saying no. Hallelujah. Okay, here are some scriptures. Self-control, self-discipline. Control your yes. Control your yeses. Control your yeses. You can't say yes to everything. <laughs> you have to learn how to say no. And uh, when you're organized, it's uh, easier because you have a schedule. You know your schedule. Sometimes I, I used to do this, you know, I'll just overcommit myself. I said, I said yes to two, two people and the event is at the same, <laughs> the same time. <laughs> so what you're supposed to do is say, let me get back to you, let me check my schedule. Amen. And you check your schedule. If you have a schedule, now you're supposed to have a schedule. <laughs> you're supposed to have a schedule. You check and see if you're able to do it, you say yes. Now, if you don't want to do it, you can still say no. Amen. But don't say you don't want to do it. There's <laughs> a nice way of saying no. There's a nice way of saying no. Amen. Okay, let's read some scripture passages. Okay, so healthy boundaries also has to do with uh, knowing uh, knowing where you are with uh, someone as far as relationship is concerned. How close you are. You need to know how close you are with someone because they are boundaries. I think I I heard a message, I think T.D. Jakes had uh, preached this, but there are different levels of relationship and Jesus had the crowd, then he had the 70, then he had the 12, then he had the three, and then he had Peter, the one. So there were different uh, levels of relationship and depending on where you are with someone that will determine if you'll say yes or no so um, time is one factor but another factor is closeness you say do I want to um, use my time with this person do I want to spend my time Amen. And it goes both ways. You also don't want to, uh, you know, you go to a, a home, you go somewhere, you don't want to over, overstay your welcome. <laughs> You're welcome, but then sometimes you can overstay. I say overstay. They said, make yourself at home, but they didn't mean literally. <laughs> they didn't mean move in. <laughs> I thought you said, make yourself at home. <laughs> Proverbs 25, 17. Withdraw thy foot from thy neighbor's house, lest he be weary of thee, and so hate thee. <laughs> So, you know, a uh, couple of visits is good. 
But when it comes to, you know, over <clears throat> overdoing something, it all depends. You know, you have to de decide where are you with that person? Are you, are you, if you're close to that person, oh, you guys are friends, it doesn't matter. But if, uh, if you're not that close, see, relationship goes both ways. Friendship goes both ways. Be, uh, brotherhood, sisterhood, acquaintance, it all goes both ways. So, part of healthy boundaries is also being sensitive to the other person. Uh, to know if they want to be that close or not. Amen. Here's some more scriptures. Uh, Proverbs 27, 12. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. But the simple pass on and are punished. Amen. So you don't want to overcommit. You don't want to say yes to everything. You have to know what you are able to do. You have to know what you are able to do. Proverbs 25, 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. So part of having uh, self-control, self-discipline, is having healthy boundaries, knowing what you can do. If you don't know yourself, then you'll just be tossed to and fro. You know? Everybody's going to be pulling on you. Come with us, come with us, come with us. Go here, go here. And you're like, okay, okay, okay. And you're like, oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> you, you, uh, you overloved. You know you can overlove. Because the way love works is as you receive from God, you, you give out. You can over love. You can over love. Love have, has boundaries. God is the God of order. So even when it comes to love, there's order. So it's okay to say no. It's okay to say, I don't have the time. It's okay to say, I, I have other obligations. And you say it with a smile. You say it with sincerity. I think people will understand when, when you say it uh, nicely. <clears throat> yeah, I get asked to attend events and engagements. Like recently, there was an event I wanted to attend. I really wanted to attend because, uh, but uh, I had already made a prior engagement. And I was like, man, I really wanted to attend, but, uh, but I couldn't. So that's exactly what I told the individual. I'm not able to. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Okay, and uh, 
Is this good? This is good, right? This is part of diligence. Amen. Knowing when to say yes, knowing when to say no, knowing, knowing how to commit, when to commit. Don't overcommit. Amen. Okay, uh, there's some more passages here. Okay, um, Proverbs 29:11, "A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards." So it's okay to say, "I'll get back to you." You know, because it could be that, yes, I'll go. You want to go. But then later on, you find out, oh, man, I've already made uh, other obligations. And I've, now I'm committed to this. Then now you have to, you have to say no to someone. You can't be at two places at once. Amen. So part of being diligent is uh, saying, I'll get back to you. And then you check your schedule. Proverbs 25, 16. Hast thou found honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for thee lest thou be filled therewith and vomit it. You see? Eat so much that is sufficient. So you can't say yes to everybody. Otherwise it's going to backfire. Yes, I'll do it. Yes, I'll do it. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're just drained. Too much, you know, our body has order. Part of order is knowing the, the quantity of something. The quantity, because too much of something can um, get things off balance. Your, your, your health will be off balance. So this physical health but there's also boundary health. Boundary health. So you have to know your boundaries. Don't overcommit. Don't say yes to everybody. You have to know yourself. You also have to be sensitive to others and know when you are overstepping your boundaries and communication is good too you communicate you know I like uh, Ecclesiastes 3 Ecclesiastes 3 is very powerful passage Ecclesiastes chapter 3 to everything there is a season a season have boundaries when it's winter it's winter when it's summer it's summer there's a time for everything to everything there's a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven so you have to know what season you're in. You have to know what season you're in. Otherwise, you might be wearing winter clothes in the summer or wearing summer clothes in the winter. Figuratively speaking.
because for for someone else it could be that their season is winter but you're not in a winter season it could be that God put you in a summer season and he says this is what I want you to do don't worry about other people let them do what they're doing they're not going where you're going you focus on your assignment because what they're doing is right for them that's their season but then if you do it and say well they're doing it so I can do it then you could be wearing winter clothes in the summer in your summer <laughs> don't wear winter clothes in your summer find out what season you're in is a time to be born a time to die a time to plant a time to pluck up that which is planted a time to kill a time to heal a time to break down and a time to build up the children of Israel they were in the wilderness they were in their wilderness season it could be that uh, the theme message everybody's preaching prosperity 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 and the Lord says for you you're in your wilderness season so for you I'm taking you through a test but everybody's prosperity prosperity <laughs> that's their season but for you your season right now is humility because what what is God doing in your life right now God does things corporately but he also does things individually and they're not always the same level you know my, my spiritual father David E Taylor he's shutting away right now it's four years going on five it's at the same church he hasn't gone out see he's not following the season of what everyone else is doing he's following the season in what God told him to do because he's paying the price for the end time harvest healthy boundaries you have to know what season you're in a time to weep and a time to laugh A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. Those are boundaries. There is a time to weep. There's a time for laughter and dancing. All these are boundaries. A time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. You see? You need to know when to say yes and no. The time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. No, I can't do it. It's, uh, that's not my season. I'm too busy. I'm committed to something else. There's a time to embrace time to say yes but there's a time to say no a time to get and a time to lose a time to keep and a time to cast away a time to rend and a time to sow a time to keep silence and a time to speak a time to love and a time to hate a time of war and a time of peace. What time is it for you? What time is it for you? You have to know what time 
it is for you so you can know your boundaries if you don't know what time it is for you you'll say yes to everything just because it's a good thing doesn't mean it's the right thing just because it's a good thing doesn't mean it's the right thing the right thing is what God told you to do There was a story about this prophet, this man of God, he's a young prophet, and God gave him an instruction. He said, go deliver this message. He gave him an instruction, but he told him, don't stop anywhere. Don't talk to anybody, just go. So along the way, he met another prophet this is a senior prophet. He was older than him. Probably even well known. And the senior prophet said, hey, where are you going? He's, he said, I, I got to go deliver a message. He said, oh, stop by. Let's, let's grab, let's eat. I have some food. He said, no, no, no. God, you know, I have to go. God told me uh, to not uh, stop and do anything. And the senior prophet lied and said, you know, God told me it's okay. You can come and eat. So he figured, well, he hears from God too. Okay. Yeah, he was reputable, you know. So he went, stopped, had a nice dinner. And as they were eating, then the Spirit of God came upon him and really gave him the true word from the Lord. He said, because you disobeyed God, you're going to die. I'm not saying this to scare you guys, but this is really in the Bible. So the young prophet left and uh, I forget what happened, how he died, but he died. I'm not saying this to scare anybody. But what I'm telling you is, is that just because it's a good thing doesn't mean it's the right thing. There's some things written in the Bible, I'm like, wow, man, that was serious. Amen, but you're going to do the right thing. You're going to live and not die, so don't be afraid. <laughs> you're going to live and not die, but it's good to be wise. You don't want to waste your time doing a good thing. You don't want to waste your time doing a good thing. The devil already knows if he brings the wrong thing or a bad thing, you're going to say, oh, no, I'm not doing that. So he said, okay, I'm going to bring a good thing so I can distract him, distract her from the assignment, from the right thing. So here you are. Time is going. And you're doing a good thing thinking that you're pleasing God but all this time is going instead of you doing the right thing which is the thing that God told you to do because when you're in in your element you are more efficient when you're in your element you are more efficient a fish does not try to fly a fish does not try to fly. That's just not their element. What do they do? They swim. They swim. That's what they know how to do best. Healthy boundaries. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, so... Um, Galatians 6, 5. For every man shall bear his own burden. Isn't the Bible interesting? In one passage, it says, bear each other's burden. Another passage, it says, everyone bear your own burden. <laughs> this is why you have to read the word of God 
in context and by the Holy Spirit to get understanding. Because the devil, he'll take, he'll give you one passage and he'll make a doctrine out of one passage. He'll use it out of context. Just because it's written doesn't mean it's for you for that time. The devil told Jesus, it is written, throw yourself down and the angels will catch you. You go in Psalms, say, wow, it is, it does say that. When it was used out of context. So wisdom is profitable. So here, when we talk about healthy boundaries, it says, for every man shall bear his own burden. This is applicable because you need to bear your own burden. You don't want to overcommit. It's one thing to carry your cross, but everyone else is asking you to carry theirs too. That's going to be heavy on you, don't you think? Carry your cross. And um, if God gives you the grace, to carry others, then great. Amen. Okay, we're going to stop here. Oh, Jesus, we love you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want to pray for those that are sick. Hallelujah. God is a healer. If you're sick, God wants to heal you. Remove the barrier of, of unforgiveness. If you have any unforgiveness in your heart, go ahead and release it. Give those that have sinned against you. God will heal you. Amen. Take a moment and do that. I'm going to pray for you. Jesus. I command every sickness in your body to go now in the name of Jesus. The Lord heals you now. I rebuke that sickness mentally. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord loves you. The Lord loves you. from Jesus get your copy joshuamediaministries.org this book will change your life if you haven't seen Jesus after reading this book you will see Jesus this book was written by my spiritual father David E. Taylor this book is for real you guys this is not uh, this is not fake you will really see Jesus after reading this book I saw the Lord I read this book and I saw the Lord. I saw him in my dreams. Amen. It's also available on audio. Go to joshuamediaministries.org and also get it on Amazon. Amen. We did a series on humility. So get this book. Victory over pride, triumph, and humility. Victory of a Pride, Triumph, and Humility, joshuamediaministries.org. Get you a copy. Humility is important. You want to be close to God, you need to be humble. Amen. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Amen. Oh, I love this book. We're, we're having a series on the heart, currency of the heart. 
currency of heaven. The heart is the currency of heaven. On Saturdays, I want to want you guys to join us. Saturdays, oh man. So, you know, there are so many types of hearts. The heart is a currency. And the heart that you develop, you, you can use that as payment to, to buy things from the Lord. Jesus said, buy of me gold and gold tried in the fire. Revelation 3. He wants us to buy. He wants us to buy from him. The, the five wise virgins told the fullest, go and buy from them that sell. There's buying in the kingdom. Proverbs 23, 23 said, buy the truth and sell it not. Get this book, The Heart, the Currency of Heaven. There's so many different types of heart. All in here. Hallelujah. Okay. I'm excited about the series on the heart. Saturday's been awesome. So far we've discussed the heart of faith and the heart of brokenness. Heart of brokenness is powerful. You, know, you can buy a, Oh, I don't want to get into it. Just go and watch the video. Join us Saturdays at 3. Yeah, so let me give you the schedule right now. Saturdays. Hello. Saturdays. I want to invite you to come and join us. Every Saturday at 3 p.m. The address is 1126 North Brookhurst Street, Suite 207, City of Anaheim, California. This is at Cal UMS uh, Private University. That's at 3 p.m. And then on Sundays, Sundays, 3.30 p.m. The address is 14565 North Valley View Avenue. Unit A, Santa Fe Springs, California. 90670. Oh, that's Sunday. So I want to see you come and join me for a powerful service. And every Monday and Wednesdays, we have our Zoom Bible study. We're on a series on diligence. Okay, everyone, we are done. God bless you. Thank you for joining me. Remember to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love Him more today than you did yesterday. And love people the way Jesus loves you. And everything will be all right. Until next time, bye-bye.